in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Apostle, what guarantee do I have that I will live a great life? There are no physical guarantees, sadly. There are no governmental guarantees. There are no educational guarantees. There are no sociological guarantees. Vain is the help of man. Your guarantee is the revelation. Are we together? Hmm. The revelation. So God can send you to a place where you do not have any human connection. And you know the one who sent you. He said, when I sent you, lackest thou anything. Because the Lord strong and mighty stands before you like a mighty terrible one. Are we blessed? For sake of time, you may write this down just for reference. We look at the story of David and Goliath. We may not have the time to read, but please write for reference. First Samuel, when you read First Samuel from verse 1 Samuel um, 16 down to 17. You read everything, the entire verse. It talks about the young, the young boy, David. Now, David was a shepherd. Are we together? And in carrying out his duty, he experienced something about the God who was strong and mighty. With that strength upon him, he tore the mouth of the bear and the lion. One time, this six-footed beast called Goliath of Gath was threatening even the warriors of Israel. And Saul, alongside his men, the Bible records, they were afraid and he kept threatening them every day. Bring me a man that I would fight. And the young boy went to serve his brother's food as a teenager. And he heard the beast roaring. And he said, please, can I know what is going on there? And he said, this man is looking for a man to fight him. And he stood with confidence and said, what shall it be done to this man? He was already discussing the rewards because as far as victory is concerned. Now, you need to understand the stature. Listen, listen, listen. You need to understand the stature of the man he was talking about. Six fingers, six toes. Goliath of God. The brothers were angry and they said, leave this place. He said, let me tell you something I have not told you. I am not standing on my own strength. One time while I was a shepherd, the lion came. I know what the king can do even in the jungle. This man, the king of glory, who is strong and mighty, even mighty through me, is able to act valiantly over this man. Finally, he convinced Saul. And when he stood there, Goliath came like every other day and saw a tiny boy. Don't blame Goliath. I would do the same thing. He said, am I a dog? I will kill you, but at least respect me. Let me know I fought, not played. You thought David would keep quiet. When he was done talking, David said, listen now. You come to me with your spheres and bows, but I come in a name. <laughs> Hold on. Life will treat you based on what is the basis of your advancement. You can come in a certificate. You can come in a connection. David said, I would be stupid to fight you with a sword. I come in a name. My weapon is the name. Someone you need to hold that name and take it and with it, that is the name that will build you the house. It is Jaira that will build the house, not cement and block. Uh -uh. It is Rafa that will bring the healing. We confront challenges with the dimension of God that has been preserved for our learning and our growth. This is why we wax valiant based on revelation. I come to you in a name. And then he now went further to prophesy. He understood James chapter 2 and verse 26 that a body without a spirit is dead. He had killed the spirit by that boldness. 
He knew that Goliath was a body and if without a spirit, he's dead. And he said, let me tell you what will happen to you. I will bring you down with this link. When you are down, it is your own sword that I will use and I will feed your flesh to the birds. And Goliath said, all right. The Bible says he ran towards him. The people that do know their God ran towards him. Ran towards him. Ran towards him. The spirit of faith is the first effect of having the revelation of the Lord who is strong and mighty. Are we together? Number two. What is the second effect? In fact, let me wrap up this first one. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Paul was mentoring the church in Ephesus and having strengthened them across a, a number of, of, of faith areas, he now tells them in 6 verse 10, he says, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. Do you know what that means? Out of the abundance of that revelation you have had, Amplified says, draw your strength from your union with him. Let the awareness that you are one with him, let it strengthen you and give you audacity. Draw your strength, be empowered through your union with him. There are people who will rise from these meetings who will do things that when people ask you, the only thing you will be able to say is to call the name that backed you. Listen, we are not much in ourselves. The Bible clearly tells us that our sufficiency is not of ourselves. Are we together? The amplification factor in the life of any man doing exploits is the name he has found. The name of the Lord is so mighty it can become a strong tower that the righteous will enter and he is saved. A strong tower is not the only thing the name of God can become. It can become a shield and a defense. Are we together? Aaron was commanded to bless the nation of Israel and the Lord said upon that blessing he will put his name. And that is the reason why they will be blessed indeed. Because his, in, his name is upon the speaking. Number two. What is the second effect of having the revelation of the Lord strong and mighty? Are you ready? Supernatural empowerment to demonstrate the might and the power of God to your world. So the first implication is access to the spirit of faith. Second is supernatural empowerment. Supernatural empowerment. To demonstrate the might and the power of God to your world. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 20, the Bible clearly tells us that we are ambassadors. An ambassador is an extension of the conviction, an extension of the value and the promoter of the interest of another. Is that true? When you call someone a brand ambassador, it means everything about the life of that person should reflect who he's representing. So if it is true that we are ambassadors, then if he is the Lord strong and mighty, it means captured within the frame of your Christian experience should be a revelation of that truth. Not just from God, but through you. We are ambassadors, the Bible says. Are we together? In Romans chapter 15 and verse 19, the Bible tells us how to preach the gospel fully. Let's read together. Ready? The complete gospel is that which captures the dimension of God. The power of God must be represented in your gospel for it to be complete. Through mighty signs and wonders, he says, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel. That means if the only thing I say is the message, it is not complete. It must be the message and the power component revealed even in my gospel. Are we learning? In John chapter 4 and verse 48, 
Jesus was speaking and he said, except ye see signs and wonders, he said, ye shall not believe. There is a world and a generation that is clamoring for an experience of God. Are we together? The way God designed his system and his economy is that his words precede his power, but they are never alone. Every time you see the word of God behind it, the power of God is following. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, Jesus was speaking to them. Remember when he resurrected, he gathered them and for a period of 40 days, he kept teaching them on the matters of the kingdom. And they asked him a question. They said, will you at this time restore the nation of Israel? And he said, it is not for you to know the times and the seasons that the father has put within his care. Verse 8 says, but ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, he said they would receive power. And he says the power will make you a witness. That means it takes more than being there to be a witness. It takes more than seeing what happened to be a witness. It takes power to be a witness. You will be a witness in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. One last scripture. In Acts chapter 4 and verse 33, I love this scripture. It has inspired me for many years. It says, and with great power, gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon how many? There are certain things in the spirit that are for some, like the fivefold, he gave unto some. But when it has to do with access to power and grace, great grace can come on them all. Are we blessed? I wish I had the time I would have explained something a bit about the power of God that I think, respectfully speaking, we're not really getting. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 24, Paul again mentoring the church in Ephesus, he made a very instructive statement. He says, but unto them that are called, both Jews and Greeks, he says, Christ is the power of God. The word Christ, there comes from the word Christos, the anointed. It also means the anointing. So when the anointing of the Spirit is revealed, it has a twofold operation. The anointing is revealed as the power of God and the anointing is revealed as the wisdom of God. Are we together? There are people whose problems do not require power. It requires the anointing but as the wisdom of God. So when you fall under the anointing and stand up, you need to find out what you received. For someone, it may be that what came upon you is the wisdom and the insight. Speaking about wisdom, he said, by me, kings reign and princes decree justice. He says, with me are riches, wealth, and honor, yea, durable riches and righteousness. Most times, our focus on the power, the, the charisma, that, that dimension of and sometimes we do not, we rob ourselves of the wisdom of God. When the anointing is revealed, you must look forward to these twofold dimensions. Revealed as the power of, if you are sick, you don't need the wisdom of God there. What you need is the power of God as his ability to correct and adjust things. Are we together? But there are decisions, destiny decisions. They don't require power. They require wisdom. When you know the Lord strong and mighty, you can access realms of power and realms of wisdom that are way beyond your level of exposure, way beyond even your physical orientation. This is why when they match your result to your personality, if it is God that helped you, it should not match. Are we together? If they look at your exploits and look at who is behind it, something should look unfair there as a proof that you have outsourced the wisdom wherein you have used for that exploit. Someone shout amen. amen. So, the spirit of faith, number two, gives you access to the anointing, the power of God. Spiritual empowerment is very important in our faith adventure. Number three, very quickly, and then we'll pray. Has God blessed someone? What is the third implication of having that revelation of the King of glory as the Lord strong and mighty? I wrote down here, 
The third effect, the third implication is that praise will continually rise from the world of men unto the king of glory. When you have a revelation of the power and the might of God, it will compel praise perpetually. Every time you study scripture, you will see that when there was a display of the manifold power and the wisdom of God, what emanated from that experience was praise. It is impossible to be silent when you see the Lord strong and mighty in action. Let me give you three scriptures and then we'll pray. Psalm 107. The full text is from verse 8 to 32, but I'll just read one or two verses for the sake of time. It says, Oh, that men would praise the Lord. Why would they praise him? It tells you the reason. For his goodness and for his wonderful works. Where? To the children of men. You read down to 32, you will find it there. Oh, that men. It's an instruction. It's a strong admonishment that every time you see the goodness of God and his wonderful works done to the children of men, praise must emanate from you. That means praise is not supposed to be something that is mechanical. There is a place where you praise him in advance but believe me, your life can be perpetually full of praise because your life will be a plethora, an episode of the wonder-working power of God per day. Notice the people who experience the power of God. Even when Jesus asked them to keep quiet, they were too grateful to be silent. There is something about the nature of authentic power. When the Lord strong and mighty is revealed, there is something about the design of the human nature that stops you from being silent in the presence of something spectacular. This is the basis of media. Media sells because of that intrinsic construct in men. It is impossible to see something spectacular and yet be silent. At best, you will select who hears it but you will not be silent. Hmm. Are we together? Praise. In Daniel chapter 6, Daniel chapter 6, from verse 25 to 27, then King Darius wrote unto the people, the nations, the languages that dwell in the earth. He's writing a letter now. Peace be multiplied unto you. Next verse, please. I make a decree. Who is speaking now? The king. The once arrogant king who said, let me see who will deliver you from my hand. Now by reason of the wonder-working power of the Lord strong and mighty, he's not ashamed. What an honest king. Even though arrogant, he was honest. In the presence of that which was superior, he used his hand to write and to speak a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. I don't know his name, but I know the individual that has revealed that unique expression of him. I've not had the time to study him. May people call God even by your name. May people say, I... I I don't, I don't know the name of this God, but I have found out that the God of Bishop Wale, okay. There is something about the expression of God through his life. The God of Abraham is still the God of Isaac. He's still the God of Jacob, but the dimensions are different. What the God of Abraham will do for you is different from what the God of Isaac will do. Your assignment is to use your lifetime to give God a name brand his name through your work with him for generations to learn him that at the end of your faith work you would have introduced a dimension of God as captured by your experience let's wrap up the king is making a decree for he is the living God and steadfast forever and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed look at the sermon that one manifestation of power gave a king an orientation without Bible school. In a moment, he learned God through the spec. For someone, your testimony is about to be a devotional for people. Listen to what you heard me say. A devotional is not what you read once. That by reason of what God does through your life, someone will be using your life as a template to study God. 
Paul calls us living epistles. That means your life should be a continuation of someone's Bible study. As he closes his Bible, the study should not close. Something about the workings of God in your life should be the continuity. Someone is feeling guilty that I didn't read my Bible today. At the sight of you, he finds hope and comfort. I can keep learning God from a life that has been able to capture a rich heritage of the Lord, strong and mighty. But only a shoe will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. Listen to this song. There are names. There are titles. There are legends and tales of strength. But only Yeshua will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. There are thrones, there are kingdoms, there are mountains and there are kings. But only Yeshua will reign forever, to his kingdom there'll be no end. Let's wrap up that scripture, 26. The king is making a decree. Daniel I make a decree, he says, forever his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be unto the end. The last verse, 27. He said, he delivereth and rescueth. This man did not go to church to learn this. He watched God, the Lord strong and mighty, walking through a man, and it provoked praise. That he, he threw aside his reputation to stand and declare the greatness of God. He walked signs and wonders in heaven and in earth. Who had delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. Let me wrap up by saying this. The king of glory cannot be, understand, cannot be understood until the Lord strong and mighty is understood. Understanding the king of glory is understanding his might and his strength. He's not a king because he was voted to power. He's a king because no one else can be king. There are people who become kings. I, I was watching the election in Kenya and you know they just um, upheld the other party and you know by the privilege of God's grace when I was there I had the opportunity to meet both parties and to have a discussion with them and just to encourage them for the sake of this listen if there's a verdict you accept it this and that and that but you see for God it's not like another party won called Jesus party or God party by 254 and then there was election malpractice even if God keeps the position, there's nobody to take it. He shall reign. Please stand. He shall reign. He shall reign forevermore. Emmanuel. God is with He shall reign, he shall reign. Let me lend a minute or two to make a very important call. John chapter 17 and verse 1, the Bible says, Jesus lifted up his eyes unto heaven and he prayed and said, Father, the hour has come, glorify now thy son that thy son may glorify you. When we get to verse 3, he says, and this is life eternal, that they may know you, the one true God, and Jesus whom thou hast sent. There are many keys of the kingdom, the mysteries of the kingdom, but there is only one key to the kingdom. And that key is Jesus. 
The Bible declares there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Are we together? And I don't want to take for granted that even though this is a very spiritual gathering, that someone is here because the Bible declares that the Lord added daily, not as many who should be transformed, as many who should be saved first. That means everywhere there is a gathering of God's people, there is always someone there sent from God to be saved. I'm going to make two altar calls in one right now. Number one, for those who are saying, Apostle, it's an honor to have listened to the things that you have shared and here at this convention I've been convicted hearing you speak I do not know this king I'm like Darius I have seen what God has done through our father Baba Wale Oke but I do not know him for myself unfortunately those who will do exploits are the people who know their God he can start as someone's God but the process should later evolve him to become your God. It must never stop as the God of another. He must become your God. They told the woman at the well, we believe not because of what you have said again. We came because of your testimony. But having met him, we know that he is now our God. The second group of people are those who, maybe you have made this decision at one point in your Christian experience. And then for some reason, things have gone haywire. And right now, you know, even by the conviction of the Spirit. For the Bible says, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he said, he will guide you in all truth. He says that he will reprove the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. And whilst you are seated there, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you and saying you can make it right. I'm going to make a call for these two groups in one. You want to make things right tonight so that you can know the king of glory. He can be strong and mighty in your life. He can be strong and mighty in your destiny. Wherever you are, I will count one to five for sake of time. I want you to leave your seat very confidently and come and stand before the king of glory. I begin my counting now. One. Young and old, be bold. Come before the king too. Win that war of destiny once and for all. If you are coming, please run. If there are people coming from outside, let's hurry up so that we can redeem time. Three. Believers, are you celebrating salvation? The king of glory wants to give you an experience. For the word is nigh thee in your mouth and your heart, even the word of faith which we preach. The Bible says, if thou shalt confess Jesus with your mouth, believing him in your heart, you shall be saved. Come, come to Jesus. Doesn't matter how far. Please come quickly. I have decided to follow Jesus No turning back No turning back I have decided to follow Jesus No turning back No turning back Hallelujah Listen an altar call is a very serious call. Most times, people come out for altar calls and they don't even say anything. They pinch themselves. They play around. The truth is they are not saved. There is a spiritual pattern allocated for the administration of salvation. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, when you read from verse 8 to 10, it says there must be an activity between your heart and your mouth for salvation to be administered. Coming is only a way of seething the people and then helping to guide them make that decision but ladies and gentlemen brothers and sisters hear me it is not coming out that gets you saved in fact it is not even a spiritual recitation that gets you saved 
the sincerity of this conviction by the Spirit in your heart, then verbalized by your confession of faith is what qualifies for the administration of salvation. For the Bible says, this is the record, the testament, that God hath given us eternal life, but he constructed the administration of eternal life such that you must encounter the Son to have life. You cannot have this life without meeting the Son. So I congratulate you standing upon the grace of our Father. It is an honor to welcome you to this family of faith. May I please request, by the way, for those who are watching by way of television or watching online, you are following from across the globe, right in your home, your office. Here is an opportunity for you to make Jesus Lord of your life. There is no distance, there is no barrier here at this conference under the leadership and the grace of our Father, Bishop Waleo K. It's my honor to lead you to Jesus. As we pray this prayer, I want you to pay attention and to pray that prayer. For some, you may be listening by way of a rebroadcast. He can come to you in the name of Jesus. Lift your right hand. <coughs> say, this, say this after me. Say it loud and clear. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I declare that I love you. I declare that I believe in you, that you are the son of the living God. I ask you to forgive my sin and I receive your life. I declare that you are my savior, you are my Lord, and you are my king. I also declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight and forever, I am a child of God. I am a recipient of eternal life. I go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name. Please keep your hands lifted. Father, we thank you. The Bible declares that as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. By the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. I commend you to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance, even among them that are sanctified. And according to your confession of faith, I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over your life. You go forward ever and backward never in Jesus' name. May I please request that you follow the counselors. There is a board there. Just follow them orderly. Let's, let's honor them as they go. Please be careful with the crane so it doesn't injure you. Hallelujah. 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 I want to stand upon the grace of our Father and Daddy thank you again for this opportunity. I do not take it for granted. I am truly honored and truly grateful. I have the honor of speaking over our lives kings rule by their words the Bible says where the word of a king is not the word of a man where the word of a king is Psalms 82 and verse 5 says they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course Verse 6 says I have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the Most High. Seven says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. <clears throat> In the name that is above all names, I stand upon the grace of our Father and every servant of the living God here represented, and I declare the same way the gates open for the King of Glory to come in, every gate that has been closed over your life and destiny, we speak to it now. Efata, be open. In the 
name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Gates of new dimensions. Gates of new seasons. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Acts chapter 12 that Peter was bound hand and glove and eight soldiers were protecting him. Verse 5 says, But prayer was made of the church unto God for him. And an angel came. And the Bible says when the angel tapped him, the first gate opened. The second gate opened. Listen, he said he came to the iron gate that opens to the city. There is a gate that controls influence. If that gate is open, what you see in front of you is the city. I prophesy to you that everything that has buried your influence, may the one who can cut the bars of iron and break the gates open, may he swing open the gates for you. And then he says, at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and they sang. And the Bible says the people in the prison heard them. Suddenly there was an earthquake and a sound. And the Bible says, and all doors opened. They needed only one door. But when the king of glory came, all doors, so that others too can pass. I decree and declare, may that all door anointing open every closed door in your life. Hallelujah. All blessings come from God through men to men. It doesn't just come from God to men. Men have always been midwives. The Bible says the king sent for Joseph. It took the king sending for the prison to be opened. Whoever must send for you in the name that is above all names. May the father of spirits, the one who compels men to look for men, Compel your helpers to send for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And on the third day, the Bible says that an angel came and rolled the stone and sat on it for the king of glory to come out. The kind of angelic assistance you need. Shelakapos kedata embrekete bakatosiata by the privilege of the grace that comes through redemption let angelic activities be dispatched for your sake are they not ministering spirits send today that be the heirs of salvation hallelujah he said our brother Lazarus sleepeth let us go and wake him when they got to the tomb he said roll away the stone it took a man to roll away the stone there are some stones that men must roll away. Financial stones. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, all stones be rolled away. The Bible says, for as he is, so are we in this life. If he came out of the grave, then I prophesy upon you, like the bones in the valley of Ezekiel, in the name of Jesus, I prophesy as have been commanded, Bones, find your bone and be restored to an exceeding great army. Hallelujah. Please hear me. The Bible says, when Lot, judgment was about to be declared over Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot was with his daughters there. Are we together? When the angels came, the men came and wanted to sodomize the angels and Lord even offered, he said, take my daughters and the people refused and the angels struck them with blindness. My Bible says they wearied themselves at the door. You can be close to the door but if your eyes are not open, that you are close to the door but it will still not open. The miracle of open eyes. The Bible says then open he their understanding that they might understand scripture. In the name of Jesus, may the King of Glory open your understanding. Access to light. Paul was praying over the church in Ephesus. Chapter 1 from verse 16. He says, I bow my knees to the Father of our glory, of glory, that he may grant unto you, 
wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him knowledge is not revelation it is knowledge and understanding that becomes revelation you can have knowledge and awareness and yet not have revelation the eyes of your understanding he says being flooded with light that ye may know for these 40 years every door God has opened for our father we stand by the privilege of connection and by the privilege of the altar here I decree standing on his grace every door that did not close for him it will not close for you every door that opened for him across the nations may it be open for you hallelujah for these 40 years death could not come to him therefore I declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead every covenant with death Job said he will deliver you in six things yes yeah, seven things one of it is the scourging tongues of men if there is any tongue speaking against you to bring you to the grave I declare be escaped like the bird before the fowler hallelujah Now, please listen, everyone. I've been given the permission to do this, and I just want to do this. Just help those under the anointing. When Cornelius, please listen carefully. When Cornelius, the Bible called him a centurion, and he said he was a devout man who feared God. I hope you know that the salvation of the Gentiles started in Acts chapter 10 and it came through the wings of a man who understood two things. Heaven commended that the basis for that visitation was based on number one, the strength of his prayer and number two, the strength of his giving. As, as powerful as God's redemption plan is, it rode upon the wings of a supposed ordinary man you would think the salvation of the Gentiles should happen through a mighty apostle and a prophet but it came to a military man only because he satisfied two conditions the health of his priesthood and his benevolence towards blessing men if he could bless men then he could be a worthy tool even for the kingdom now please hear me when it has to do with the subject of giving I submit to you shamefully but truthfully that many people have been wrongly manipulated within the body of Christ and sometimes it's even an ugly concept when we talk about it, it it's very ugly because people have merchandised the gospel sadly we know God is purging and helping his church are we together however I will tell you this the Bible says a son honored his father and one of the principles of honor is giving with understanding for if giving is by manipulation there is no reward are we together the Bible says he that sows sparingly he shall reap sparingly he that shows bountifully will reap bountifully then he says every man according as he has proposed in his heart so let him give cheerfully and not grudgingly for God loves a cheerful giver the next verse says and God is able to make all grace abound towards you so that ye having sufficiency in all things that you will abound in every good work I can tell you this there are mysterious principles that lift men in this kingdom among them is connecting to prophetic patriarchal blessings through giving with understanding 40 years is a very prophetic number because it means the end of a season of training the end 40 years gives way to 10 more years that declares jubilee at the end of 40 years a man is now authorized to enter his season of appearing it's a prophetic number are we together and i want to challenge us to give beginning from myself i will not preach what i don't believe I will not preach what I don't understand. I will not preach what I don't agree with. 
I have preached and we have spoken about the king of glory. The entire plan of redemption was given. That God carried his son as a seed and sowed him to the earth. And as a result, he's today received many sons into glory. I want to challenge you. I've already agreed with God even before I came here. I will tell you the truth. I fear God. I will stand before God. I will not be a party to anything that does not glorify Jesus Christ. But I want to challenge us to give. And this giving is twofold. Number one, to honor this work and to honor these 40 years. To tap into this grace that God has so lavishly granted our father and our mother. But number two, I want to challenge you. We are sowing into the anointing of our father. It is not compulsory. It is by revelation. But I can tell you this is the mystery behind the rising of many people. I know that this principle works if done with understanding. I'm not going to give you any amount. I may not have the liberty to do that and I apologize. But I'm going to challenge you. I already have my seed for the convention. Not to announce for pride my apologies. But just to challenge our hearts and my seed for him, our father. I would never come to see our father and not hold a seed. The reason why it does not work for us men of God is that we tell people to do it but we don't do it. That is the truth. The same Lord is rich unto all. Anyone who does this in truth and with understanding. I know the things that have changed in my life. Once upon a time, some of you may have heard my stories. When I met two women daddy and I was going to buy sugar cane and the women were standing there like her mommy and I pleaded I said I will I will pay for you just to honor them not looking for anything and one of those mama looked at me they were blessing and I, I didn't really pay attention but she looked at me with audacity and said my son forever walk upon gold this was what she spoke to my life it was in a city Midwife in Quara State and Ekiti State. I returned from preaching many years ago in Afe Babalola University. On my way returning to Quara to take a flight down, you know, to Abuja and then return back home. I decided to stop in a small village there where I saw that people live mysteriously long. I saw the obituary 100 and something. Every time you see repetition of patterns, there is a grace supporting it there. Are we together? The Bible says, for this purpose, many are weak, sick, and do sleep. What is the sin? Not discerning the body. There are spiritual investments that reside within the body that through honor and discernment, you can tap into it. I was a man of God, but I had to throw that away. When I stopped, I couldn't speak Yoruba, so I pleaded that they should look for someone. I said, who is the oldest man now in this city? My apologies that I'm, I'm taking some time, sir. My sincere apologies. But I just want to charge our hearts so that we can receive. I stopped there and I saw a man, 136 years, he had just died. I couldn't believe it. In Nigeria, I know the kind of call God has for me. The kind of my call is close to death perpetually. So when I find an anointing for longevity, I tap into it with wisdom. Are we together? I've been in the midst of many crises right from the time in Zaria and the north, even before the Lord brought me. I know what it means to be close to the gates of death. I know men are preserved by the wisdom they have. Are we together? And I carried a seed, and I saw some women there, and we finally got a, a man who was speaking limited English, and I said, please, they should take us to anybody who is the oldest there. We entered a room and there was a man, I think he was maybe probably a senior apostle. He looked like a man of God. And I was talking and they would interpret. And we said, Baba, we are men of God. And I just want to come and honor you and to have you bless us. He sat on his chair and laughed and said, kneel down. See, those who have this thing know they have it. This is a true story. I got down on my knees with my seed. And he began to speak in Yoruba. I didn't hear one thing he said, but I felt like a crown was being put upon my head. Once that was done, I got up, sowed the seed and blessed him. 
going to go and enter the car, I saw the women that were standing. And I said, let me go and appreciate them. And they now told me this one 36-year-old man who died, that was his wife standing. No glasses, no stick, no nothing. The wife of his youth. I went back. I said, madam, he may have died, but the Bible says two shall become one. So he's still alive in you. Pray for me again. This is a true story. If I'm joking, I'll tell you I'm joking. The woman tapped me and said, follow me. I walked with her and we entered a room, daddy. And when we entered that room, she started showing us pictures. She was the wife of his youth. And you know they married very early. That woman remained with him like that till the final days. And I said, Mama, please, can you pray for us? She took off her shoes and said, kneel down. She stood on barefoot on the ground. And for the next 15 minutes, she was praying. I can tell you, I am a product of many anointings. And it did not just come through prayer. That's the point I'm trying to show you. Some came through prayer. Some came through prophetic seed connection with understanding. Forget about the abuses here and there and some of the mistakes people have made. I want to challenge someone right now. May I please request if we can display the ministry account number? I don't know how we are going. Okay, beautiful. I don't know how we are going to do it for those who have a prophetic seed, particularly for our father and our mother, may I please encourage you by the message of God. You may want to label it. You may want to get the account details. I don't know how the officials will coordinate it. But I'm going to pray. May I encourage everyone to sow something. I want to pray right now. A transfer, you can make whatever it is. Whether it is now or later, just a word. I have the permission to do this and I just want to do this and then we'll step down. It's an honor for us to do this, to do it with understanding. Hallelujah. Those who are following online, you love our father in the Lord, Bishop Wale Oke, and his dear wife. You believe in what is happening here and you are tapping into that grace, sowing into his life and sowing into the vision and the conference. We're about to pray. Hallelujah. I'm standing in faith by the privilege of God's grace alongside every great man of God here, fathers of faith here represented and together as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, those who have been privileged to be partakers of the grace upon our Father, we want to pray. Hallelujah. You can use the account details. You have your seed there. You can sow. I may not necessarily ask you to come out, but I want to challenge you to really, really sow from the depth of your heart. Your church can sow. Your business can sow. As an individual, you can sow, but make sure you do it with understanding and revelation. It is not the activity that produces results. It is the understanding and the purity of hearts that supports what you are doing. Let's pray. Father, again we stand upon the grace that you have so lavishly invested upon our father and our mother and upon this great vision. Lord, I stand in partnership with every man and woman of God in this place, veterans of the gospel. And Lord, together as a united family, we thank you for the gift of our father, Daddy Wale Oke and our mother. We thank you in the name of Jesus for this great vision, 40 years of exploits even by the Spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, you have challenged your people to sow, to honor our parents, to sow, to honor the work. Therefore, Lord, I stand by the privilege of this call and by the privilege of this grace. I declare for everyone who has given, is given, and will give. May the God of heaven, who answers by the name Jaira, may he visit you. In the mighty name of Jesus. I prophesy to you, like the prophet said over Samaria, for some of you by this time tomorrow, in the name that is above all names, may the Lord turn your captivity and give you joy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Like Elijah spoke to the woman in Shunem, I speak to you, your bread will not be spent. In the name of Jesus Christ. When men say there is a casting down for you, let it be that there is a lifting up. Paul, explaining the mystery of the seed, said God is able to give your seed another body. You are sowing money, reap favor. Yes. 
you are sowing money reap wisdom you are sowing money reap restoration may god give your seed another body in the mighty name of jesus christ the level at which you have given you will never go below it in the name of jesus christ and i pray for you for every soul that is won through your seed for every life that is mentored and transformed for every activity that makes for kingdom advance that is sponsored by your seed may it rise as a memorial for you in heaven in the name of jesus christ may the lord bless you as you sow and increase you in the name of jesus daddy thank you again may the lord bless you in jesus name Give the Lord a big hand. Please give the Lord a big, big hand. Please give the Lord a big hand. Give him a big hand. Pastor Yomi, let there be music. Uh, let's give everybody now. Now listen to this. I didn't plan to step on this altar today. If you watch it in the morning, after the graduation, I didn't step in, but the, the water is stirred. And um, the very, very prophetic moment. The man who's bringing the next word is in the house. I recognize Pastor Oju Uyemade. Please give him a big hand. I recognize him. But I want the very, very important activity of giving to be concluded. It's ordinary giving. Your seed is very precious. The offerings of God's people are secret. So, Yomi, give us music. Let's sing. Don't go yet, son. Give us music. Give your offering properly from your heart with understanding to the Lord, then we'll do something. Praise the Lord. You me? Are you there? Come on now. Thank you. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Chineke idi ma 
Hey, Hey, Come on, Oyo. Come on. Hey, come on. Hey, Oyo. 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 Everybody, 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 I will lift up Jesus. Somebody give the Lord a shout of joy. If you have not been able to give your friend wave, give a wave. Let me see you. I don't be able to. Okay, all of us have. Now, give me a few minutes. In the period of praying, preparing for this convention, the Lord particularly spoke to me. It is going to be a generational shift convention. It's going to be a generational shift. Forty represents a generation in the scripture. So we took it seriously to really pray, to at least seek the face of the Lord. And he spoke. He said many things about that. And as I sat down there listening to my son preach, joy bubbled within me. The future of the church in Nigeria is glorious. <laughs> Listen to this. Boko Haram is no problem. Let me hear your amen. Yeah. Banditry is no problem. Yeah. Let me hear your amen. Yeah. Or the kidnapping, no problem. Yeah. They're they are happening, they're real. But church, be careful. Let's not enter into their territory. Let's not reply with hate and bitterness. That's not our domain. We're in the domain of love. They're in the domain of hate. If you cross over from our domain to their domain, we will lose. Because that is not our native territory. We're not fitted for it. We cross over into a domain of hate, bitterness. My friend, we are like fish out of water. But we stay in the domain of love. And we unleash the ability of the king of glory. What's Boko Haram? Recently I was praying and thinking about this. The rate at which Muslims were getting born again in the 70s, in the 80s, was serious. But since people began to respond in hate, something is happening to that. We must go back to our domain. Let's go back. That apart. A few years ago, I think about 12 years or so, there are witnesses here. And I was standing man ago, Professor Peter Wagner traveled down to Nigeria shortly before he died and called a meeting of apostolic leadership in Nigeria. We held this meeting, my friends, George Covenant, sorry, office, in <clears throat> All the apostolic fathers, the Pentecostals were there. Pastor Yeh, the boy, Dr. Omar Pai, Bishop Michael Konko, we were there. 
And Peter Wagner, professor of church growth, he says certain things. He says, I'm a professor of church growth. I studied the move of God all across the world together with my team. He said, there is no nation on earth where the move of God is so strongly felt like it is in Nigeria. He said, we, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, you will clap to, I'm, I'm saying something, I'm going somewhere. He said, we studied it. Bishop Bakri, you were in that meeting. He said, no nation on earth. He said, we studied everything. He said, but God woke me up in the night and said, go and tell the apostolic leaders of the church in Nigeria that they must not allow what happened to the revival in Korea to happen to them. That Korea used to have the revival fire glowing all over the world. Everybody wants to go to Korea. But now it has become a heap of ashes. And if the apostolic leaders in Nigeria are not warned, what happened to Korea will happen again in Nigeria. Go on them. That was his last trip to Nigeria before he died. Oh, we were all in tears. Everybody. 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 We're just praying and praying and praying, asking God to help us. And then the Lord spoke that the church in Korea went through that disaster because there was a disconnect between the fathers who received the unction, the anointing, and the mantle for revival, and the next generation. They didn't carry the next generation along. And the revival died. Now, I've shared this a couple of places. Uh, Pastor Pojo, please, permit me. You trust the prophetic grace of my life. You have your time today. Oh, please, kindly come up. Please come. Come. Please. Please. Clap for Give me, give, give me, can I have another microphone? Don't go, don't go, don't go, music, don't go, give me the minstrel, stay there, stay there, stay there, it's a prophetic moment, you know, it's a prophetic moment. He was telling me something, I, just, I went to preach for him at his annual pastor's conference a few days ago, and there was a gentleman from Singapore, who told him something about what I just told you now with statistics. I want you to share. This is very, very serious. And what is happening here today, this man represents a new generation, a generation. This you know, we have, we've had Baba Adibu, great things God are doing with him and his peers. Pastor Kumi and Ko. My friend David Oyekpo is going to be here tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. He was with me 40 years ago, Brother David, when we had the first Holy Ghost Convention. He will tell you with his mouth tomorrow. You've you have something. You have, how many of you had Baba the boy yesterday that your generation will be greater than his own generation? <laughs> how many of you had it? <laughs> and listen to me. If you are talking of anybody in the body, in the body of Christ globally, outstandingly great, Adebu is one. It took a church struggling, classical Pentecostal church, 32 small parishes. And now they are in 200 nations of the world. In Nigeria alone, there are over 38,000 parishes. If you're talking of greatness, that's it. But when he said, as a generation that will be greater than his, that's very, very prophetic. Because God takes his people from glory to glory. You will see greater glory. Some people are hearing me now. You will be greater than Adeboye. You will be greater than Adeboye. But listen.
reason I, I want pastor to tell us in yeah, summary what that man said. He, he just told me there now. And you see the significance of what you want to do now. Please, over to you, Pastor Quachus. Yes. Well, what he said was that in 1955, in South Korea, the population was 4% Christians. It was a Buddhist country. By 1985, which was 30 years after, because of the revival, the Christian population was now 34% and it was on the rise. By 2015, that Christian population had diminished to 22%. But the significant thing is that among the young generation, only less than 3% profess Christianity. So the next Judaism. They're back to, to Buddhism. To Buddhism. To Buddhism. Now, son, we're going to pray for you. I'm going to invite some people. Um, I have some key officials of PFN here today. By the grace of God, when Baba spoke to you yesterday and he referred to me as his commander in chief, that's how he called me. When I became national president of PFN, Baba looked at me. He said, Son, you are my commander in chief now. He said, as far as I am concerned, and the entire redeemed Christian church of God, it is what to say that we will do. And Baba doesn't play with words. I felt like crawling under the ground. And since that time, he has stood solidly. Every instruction we give, Baba will just, you know. He said, he told us, he has shown us how to lead. Now he will demonstrate how to follow. That, that's something. All right? Now, I'm representing over 65 million Pentecostals. I will invite some of our officials. I have one of our directors here, Pastor Femi Emmanuel, please join me on the other. <laughs> Bishop David Bakari, please join me on the other. Bishop Prophet Adela Walker. Prophet, where are you, Prophet Adela Walker? Wave your hand wherever you are. Prophet Adela Walker. Adela Walker. Also, Osho. Okay, please join me here. There's, there's an elder statesman here who saw the old revival. You know, Dr. Likon Abatunde, please come join us here. Come, come. Dr. Likon Abatunde, please join us here. Join us here. I'm going to invite... Uh, Pastor Koju, because uh, you are the link. You are the link. You are the link. You are the link between our generation and his generation. And we want to unleash this generation to the world. And listen to this. Once we, we connected, we did a meeting, PFM from glory to glory. That was prophetic. Psalm 145, verse 4. Psalm 145, verse 4. One generation shall praise thy works to another. The revival that God has graciously given us in Nigeria shall never die. 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 It will go from generation to generation. And it will engulf the world. In the mighty name of Jesus. On this man, please surround this man of God. Everybody stretch your hands. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Just pray. Pray. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray loudly, loudly, loudly. Ma patoko ri peketo koba gaboguda gai gaboguda. 
Mengle boko de ketokori ke le boko de ketoria. Mengle boko de kete boko riki de bato te tariga. Mengle boko de kete kere boko da. Baba babo, papa le boko de kete yele le. Ye kete kere boko di age de gode. Kere bo, paila, kuribika. Ketu keto koroba. Orama ka boko de keta. Bari boko de keto keto. Purabo kote kete le boko de. Pupi pe keto kote kere ya. Bari boko de kete kera. Paida mo, paide mo, kaule mo. Ye kere boko ba kabo. Terra bagaba. Mamba re boko. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. By apostolic authority, we unleash you and your generation to the world. If Elisha carried the double portion of the grace and glory on Elijah, we command the multiple portion of the anointing that God has placed upon the fathers in Nigeria to fall upon you and your generations. Go with might. Go with grace. Go with strength. Nations will bow before you. The enemies of Zion shall be crushed under your feet. You and your generation, you will ignite global revival. Global revival. Global revival. Global revival. Global revival. As we pray for you, we ask for that mantle of grace, glory, and power for end time revival to fall upon people of your generation. Whether they be here or they are watching from their homes or wherever they are in the world, receive the mantle. You carry the fire. Carry the fire. We speak over your life Joshua Selman you will not fall you will not stumble you will be guarded with the strength of El Shaddai the Lord strong and mighty the Lord mighty in battle he will hold your hand Beyond your capacity or wisdom or ability shall be the great experts you will do. Nations will bow before you. Nations will bow before you. You be a major instrument of revival globally. 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 Globally, great doors are open to you. Go with grace, go with strength, go with might. It is established irreversibly. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Somebody give the Lord a shot. Give the Lord a shot. Give him a shot. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. 
check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.